Hey guys, Ace Trainer Liam here. Welcome back to another episode of Pokemon WTF Moments. And I'm so sorry to my notification squad. I'm sorry this video didn't come out on time. If you're watching it later and it's not the day of release, it doesn't really matter. But to the notification squad, I'm so sorry that I could possibly let you guys down. But granted, today's episode of WTF is a very difficult episode because it's one that I absolutely despise. I hated this episode growing up. I thought it was boring and nothing's changed in 20 years. I still don't like this episode, but I'm gonna cover it because I'm just that nice to you. Of course, if you're ready for more WTF moments, make sure you hit that like button. Let's go for a thousand likes if we can. A couple of the WTF moments have actually hit over a thousand likes. That's kind of impressive. Let's see if we can do it again. And of course, hit subscribe if you're new so you never miss an episode. But without further ado, let's have a look at the WTF moments for Pokemon Season 1, Episode 20, The Ghost of Maiden's Peak. <laughs> The episode starts with a ghostly woman emerging from a statue, pleading for a beloved to come back to her. That ghost then transforms into a ghastly, which has a very familiar voice, but I just can't place it. Sorry, I know some of you don't get sarcasm, so I'll let you in on a little secret. That was sarcastic. It's really obvious whose voice that was. Brock's feeling depressed because he feels like he just wasted another summer. To which Ash responds with, but it was a summer of adventure. And I kind of have to side with Ash here. Like how ungrateful of a friend is Brock being right now? Like imagine saying to your friends that you'd spent all summer with that spending all summer with them was a waste of time. Arsehole. Direct quote from Brock. For kids, summer means playing on the beach, splashing around, having fun. But for me, summer means bathing suits and girls to wear them. Mate, I feel that on a spiritual level. Team Rocket have apparently been being towed this whole time by the ferry in this little wooden tub, which begs the question, how have they been pooing? Do two of them just have to turn around and look away while one of them leans their arsehole over the edge of the tub or something? Shut up, these are important questions. Brock spots a woman that he describes as a knockout and then gets trampled by a herd of people. Should Brock have been more aware of his surroundings or was that a dick move by about 47? people. Place your answers in the comments below. The woman disappears, but not before revealing that she's actually a ghastly, and Brock, who's looking right at this as it's happening, is like, oh, she's gone. At this point, shouldn't it be obvious, especially to Brock, that this is just a ghost-type Pokemon playing tricks? And don't even try to tell me that people don't know about ghost-type Pokemon yet, because we literally saw a Gengar in the first scene of the first episode of this whole anime. I've heard some badly dubbed background audio in my time, but this scene showing the festival at Maiden's Peak really must have the background crowd noise on like a two second loop. So all you hear is Misty's voice in the background constantly going, Let's go on the Ferris wheel! Let's go on the Ferris wheel! Ah ha ha, the joke here is that elderly women are not as beautiful as younger women. I mean, fair. After being told to beware of a beautiful young woman or else he'll meet a cruel fate, Brock says, oh, I have to meet her. Mate, what part of cruel fate do you not understand? Team Rocket are searching on the ground for change people have dropped so they can steal it, and Officer Jenny turns up and thinks they're doing it so that they can hand it into the police for like lost and found. Jenny, mate, can you not see the giant R they each have written on their clothes? Like, do you not realize what that represents? At the Shrine of the Maiden, a painting is unveiled that depicts the woman that Brock and James have been seeing in the distance throughout the early parts of this episode, and it turns out that she perished over 2,000 years ago. Brock and James are necrophiles. Pass it on. Apparently the bloke she loved went off to war and never came back, and she waited for him for so long that she turned to stone because she didn't move from that one spot. Firstly, that's not how people work. You can't just turn to stone from standing still. Secondly, how irresponsible is this woman? Her fella goes off to war, and she makes zero effort to take care of herself while he's away. If she never leaves that spot, that means that people have to bring her food and water, otherwise she'll die of starvation or dehydration. The floor at her feet would be covered in wee and poo because she's standing on the same spot and therefore not leaving the spot to go and use the facilities, which is really unsanitary. And sleeping standing up, even if you can do it, is extremely unhealthy. I'm just saying, she can't have loved him that much if she wasn't even willing to look after her own well-being whilst he was away. And thirdly, this is clearly just a statue that someone carved and made up some bullshit story about so they could charge people to come and look at it. I can smell that scam from a mile off, mate. Brock says the maiden is the most beautiful rock he's ever seen. That's funny. This is the most beautiful rock I've ever seen. Direct quote from Brock. If she were my girlfriend, I'd make sure she was never out of my sight. That sounds like a pretty toxic relationship to me. Brock is a controlling boyfriend. Confirmed. James says he would be willing to fight Team Rocket to keep this girl safe. Mate, you can't even beat a 10-year-old in a Pokemon battle. How are you going to take on an entire evil organization? 
Ash and Misty want to get back to the festival, but Brock wants to sit and stare at the statue for a little while longer. And I've just realised, from this angle, he can only see the back of her, and he's this obsessed? That must be one hell of an arse. Oh wait, she's got her hands behind her back, so he can't even see her arse, so he's literally staring at nothing? Just rock? Also, he says they'll be back to the Pokemon Centre by curfew, but why would Pokemon trainers have a curfew? They literally sleep rough in tents most nights. Well, actually, Liam, in Japan, children under the age of 18 aren't allowed out between 11pm and 4am, so it makes sense that there'd be a curfew. It's Pokemon, not real world Japan. If a Charizard burns down their tent at 2 in the morning, are they supposed to be like, Oh no, we're not supposed to be out after curfew! I guess the curfew could be something they only enforce within towns, but... Shut the fuck up, let me have this one. This Pidgey clock yells, 11 o'clock! What good is that? If you're already indoors, you don't need to know if you're out after curfew because you're in. <laughs> urine. Nurse Joy grabs Ash before he can go out to find Brock and tells him staying up late can make you irritable. Sounds like she's the one that stayed up too late to me. She literally puts the Pokemon Center on lockdown, but surely there are Pokemon trainers out there that are older than 18, so therefore can be outside after curfew and probably need to heal the Pokemon. Whilst everyone's asleep, the ghost of the maiden turns up to grab the attention of Brock and James, aka the simps, and it just reminds me of how boring this episode is. I don't tune into Pokemon for this bollocks. Jesse recites the Team Rocket motto, but reading James James's lines in a slightly deeper voice because he's not there, when she could have just not even done the motto. She's interrupted by James's voice, who moments later comes flying out of this hut along with Brock. I mean, if I was Ash, Misty or Jesse, and James and Brock had been missing all night, and then in the morning we find they've been in this hut together all night and have this look on their faces, I think I know what my conclusion would be. The old woman turns up and says that everything has turned out as she'd predicted. Bear in mind she predicted that James and Brock would meet a cruel fate and they have yet to meet a cruel fate, so nothing has turned out as she predicted at all. The old lady says men who see the ghost fall under her spell and become lifeless zombies, and Brock says he doesn't care as long as he gets to be with her. I mean, you can't be with her, because she's a ghost or a rock, and either way, I don't think you're going to be able to work with that, my guy. James is scared of this apparent spell, which doesn't really make sense, because isn't it the same spell that Brock's under? Why does he care? Apparently, these anti-ghost stickers will solve the problem, but they have to be paid for. I knew it! I knew it was a scam! Didn't I tell you I knew it was a scam? I see through everything. Except with this eye, this eye's lazy. The gang start by sticking these stickers all over the hut, but why has no one thought to do that before if it's so effective? Direct quotes from Jesse and Meow. Will she come? Oh, she'll come. <laughs> yes, I'm a 31-year-old man, and yes, I'm that fucking immature. The ghost turns up and blows away most of the anti-ghost stickers. No refund policy either, I bet. Team Rocket deduced that the stickers on James aren't working because they were freebies. Basically, it was a two-for-one deal. Whenever Ash and Misty bought two stickers, Team Rocket got one sticker. And because they're freebies, apparently that's why they're not working. But the ones that are paid for on Brock aren't working either, so... There's no issue here. What's the point of this bit? James doesn't want to go with the ghost, so Jesse fires a bazooka at it. It's a ghost. A bazooka's not going to bloody work, is it? I mean, it does make a drop him, I suppose, but still. Jesse wants to defeat the ghost and break the spell on James, not because she cares about James, but because she's pissed off that the ghost isn't an independent woman. I mean, I'm pissed off too, but that's because this show's called Pokemon, and so far, this episode's had fuck all to do with it. You know what else has nothing to do with Pokemon? G Fuel! But here I am, plugging it once again, because it's 30% off right now, and Bubblegum and Sour Phaseberry's been released, so go bag those. They're just really bloody good. Nothing to do with Pokemon, but honestly, this is way more exciting than anything in this entire episode. Trust me, I know these things. The ghost makes these ghostly skulls appear, and the Pokedex has no information on them, surprisingly. And that's just my point about the whole episode, is just so little to do with Pokemon until right at the very end, which we're getting to in a minute, but damn. I hate this so much. Ash finally points his Pokedex at the ghost of the maiden and the Pokedex reveals that it is in fact a ghastly and we all knew that up to this point, but the characters for some reason all forgot that ghost type Pokemon were a thing. This is a perfect example of dramatic irony done wrong because yes, the audience knew something the characters didn't, but also in that it made all of the characters look incredibly stupid and uneducated. The characters in Pokemon just can't forget that an entire Pokemon type exists. Direct quote from Dexter. Ghastly. 
a ghost Pokemon. It is usually invisible. No, it fucking isn't. Well, actually, Liam, in the Pokedex in Pokemon Red and Blue, it does say that Ghastly is almost invisible. Last time I checked, almost didn't mean usually. It means almost. Oh, look, the old woman was Ghastly too. Wow. Is this episode over yet? No, apparently you've still got 20 slides to go. Okay. Ugh, Ghastly can talk, and with perfect diction as well, and it's clearly just James's voice actor doing a voice very similar to James's original voice. <sighs> I remember cringing at this hard, even as a kid. Pikachu gets chased by a giant mousetrap. Wait, do they have mice in the Pokemon world? Meowth loves balls. Pass it on. To counter Ekans, Ghastly transforms itself into a mongoose. An actual mongoose. Not an attempt to make it look like a Pokemon or be a Pokemon or an early Zangoose, just a regular old bog standard real world mongoose. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Screw this. So long. Just kidding. Can't get ad revenue if I'm not in the room. Probably get more. Coffin goes to use poison gas and gets stomped on by the mongoose, who is now wearing a gas mask. However, if the mongoose is actually ghastly and ghastly is a poison type Pokemon, why would it need a gas mask to protect itself against poison gas? It's immune. Ash sends out Charmander and ghastly transforms itself into a fire extinguisher. This whole section is literally just that one scene at the start of Toy Story. I brought my attack dog with a built-in force field. Well, I brought my dinosaur who eats force field dogs. I figured out who ghastly sounds like. Do you remember that Kazoo Kid video that went viral? Yeah, he sounds like the pretend spirit from that. It's not a good thing. Hey, look, they did the fusion dance. Apparently this is Venus Toys. Uh... When all seems lost, Misty pulls out a crucifix, which has no effect on Ghastly, because Ghastly is a Pokemon and not some weird demon from Christian folklore. Ghastly freaks out when the sun comes up and says it's time for me to go until the next festival, but the sun will go down again in like 12 hours, why not just wait and come back then? Even though it's very clearly broad daylight, Meowth exclaims, hey look, the sun! Yes mate, it's morning, the sun's pretty much a fixture of that. Apparently at the end of every summer, visitors of Maiden's Peak send out these little boats with candles on to help guide the way for wandering spirits. Ah yes, spiritual littering. Gotta love it. Okay, so apparently the real ghost of the maiden lives within the statue and is fully aware that Ghastly poses as her and the old lady in order to keep her legend alive. Does this make her the laziest ghost ever? She can't even be asked to do her own haunting? Ugh, does anybody else cringe so hard when Ghastly says, well, I am a ghost Pokemon. God, I hate this episode. It just makes Pokemon look and sound so fucking shit. Direct quote from Brock. If only you were 2,000 years younger. Yes, and not a rock. And not a ghost. And also not in love with another dude. Oh no, another moment Pokeshippers swear by. All because of the way Ash reacts to Misty. He must really be in love with her. When in reality, he's probably just thinking, the fuck have you done with your hair? Oh, but Misty asks him to dance. Yeah, and Pikachu, literally a moment later. And then she dances dancers near him, not with him, just amongst a group of other people who are also dancing. It ain't that deep, lads. Sorry. According to the narrator, since summer's over, Brock won't get back to the beach until next year. You do know how beaches work, don't you, mate? They are there all year round. It's not like they pack away the beaches and pop them into storage at the end of summer. And it's over! I never have to watch this episode ever again for the rest of my life. Look, I appreciate them trying something different, but when it comes to Pokemon, I want the focus of the episodes to be on just that, on Pokemon. On, not some random ghost of some woman. Plus, in this episode, when we finally got to a Pokemon battle, the Pokemon they were battling wasn't even using proper moves. It was lame, it was boring, and I hated it. Now I get it. Some of you would have really enjoyed that episode, and that's great. It must be really empowering to be able to stand up and tell the world that you have no taste. So those are my WTF moments for Pokemon Season 1, Episode 20, The Ghost of Maiden's Peak. Let me know any I missed down below or your favourite one. Of course, hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, share this video with a friend. If you want to support the channel like these wonderful, beautiful people here, do pledge to my Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash Ace And of course, use code Ace Money off G Fuel. But until next time, I'm Ace Trainer Liam. Keep on training.